In this chapter, we're going to take an introductory look at iLogic and explore some of the possibilities once we start using this technology. Now, iLogic is basically a way that we can manipulate our models so that we can create different types of configurations. So as an example on the screen here, you can see three distinct step ladders. Each has their own number of stairs. Each has different colors. They have different angles that are part of it, different heights. And so what we can basically do with iLogic is we can have all the parts update appropriately so that we can have multiple configurations of our final assemblies. Now iLogic itself really is a design environment inside of Inventor and it has some out of the box functions that make it really easy to do common tasks in an automated way. But it also lets us create design rules and lets us create top level configurations of both our models and our drawings. It's based on Visual Basic. So if you already know how to program in Visual Basic, this will be very easy for you. And even though it has its own contained sets of commands that are very powerful and useful, you can also access and call on Inventor API commands as well. So you can basically do anything that the Inventor API allows you to do from an automated perspective. Finally, it also has a set of tools that makes it easy to create forms so that you can make it easy for your end user to make the selections that they want so that you can ultimately give them a final configured model once they make all of their choices. Now, there are a couple of different ways that we can do automation with iLogic, and it's important to understand the difference between the two ways that we do it. First, we have the master model approach, and this approach we basically put all of our options into a single high-level assembly model, and then we suppress or we unsuppress parts that we don't need or that we need. We just send parameters to different parts so that we can change their size. And it's easier to learn how to do master model, so that's what we're really going to focus on most of our lesson today. But there are situations where the master model format will not work, and you'll need to go to generative design. Generative design is the other way that we can do automation. And if you think about this, imagine starting from a blank assembly where there are no parts and having automation automatically decide what types of parts you want. And it goes ahead and it pulls all of those parts. It mates them and constrains them together. And at the end, you have an assembly that only contains the parts that you need in order to make that specific configuration. Now, generative is a lot better in a lot of ways, but it does take typically more effort. It takes more work to do that. So really, you need to look at your situation and decide which way is best. Now, during this chapter, we're going to explore some of the iLogic basics. We're first going to look at this platform, and we're going to see how we can create and embed rules inside of parts and the rules are going to control the length and the width of the platform. This will give you an introduction to the iLogic user interface, and it will help you understand how we create rules at a part level. Next, we're going to look at the form builder that we have inside of Inventor. And at the assembly level, we're going to create a form that lists all of the different options that our end user can choose between when they want to configure their own unique version of the step ladder. Then we're going to start creating the rules that are actually going to modify and change all the various components of our step ladder. In scenario three, we're going to update the front frame assembly so that it changes according to the parameters that our user puts in there. We're going to see how to transfer parameters between parts in an assembly and how to suppress and unsuppress features. Then we're going to move to the step assemblies. And here we're also going to see some more abilities to suppress or unsuppress components. But we're also going to see how we can update the part locations inside of the assembly. And we're going to see how we can even go down into a part level and we can set the color of the step pads inside of our model. In the next scenario, we're going to update the rear frame assemblies 
and the platform. Those are the final two components that will need to be updated. And by the time we're done updating that, we'll have everything completed so that now we can see the final results and we can start playing around with the different options. And in fact, when you get to that point in this lesson, I encourage you to play around, change the options, see how they work, and then begin to understand how the code is modifying and manipulating the models to do what we want it to do. Now, finally, in scenario six, I'm just going to give you a quick introduction and show a generative design example. We're going to take the stepladder and through generative code, we're going to have it automatically insert either two, three, or four stairs and to place them where you want them to be. If you pick two stairs, you're not going to have four stairs where two of the steps are suppressed and two of them are showing. You'll only have two steps. And so it'll give you really an introductory look at how we do generative design and why it's very useful. Now, by the end of this chapter, you'll have an introduction to the iLogic interface. You'll learn to build part and assembly level rules. You'll learn how to create basic iLogic forms, and you'll be able to control parts from the master assembly itself. And then we're going to take just a very small introductory look at generative design so we can understand how that works. Now, before we get into the exercises, we wanted to make you aware that when we're working with iLogic from a master model perspective, if we're going to be suppressing and unsuppressing parts, it's extremely important that you create a level of detail that will allow you to do that. If you're on the master level of detail and you try to suppress a component through code, Inventor will tell you that it's not allowed, the code won't work, it will come up as an error. And so you'll need to make sure that you just right click, create a new level of detail. I generally like to call mine iLogic. It makes it very easy for me to understand why I created that level of detail. But you just need to be aware that option is there. And if for whatever reason you're experiencing some problems with any of the models, the first thing you should check is to make sure that the right level of detail is chosen.